In this video, we show how a concrete implementation of a continuous integration process with GA Portal can look like. In our case, several PLC programmers are involved in the development of a modular system. Program modules are created that are later to be reused in several machine projects. We focus here on the development of these function blocks. The blocks are versioned as TIA portal types and later made available via a TIA portal library. During the development of this modular system, dependencies will arise with each other, for example through shared PLC data types. Therefore, we must work together as a team on the same codebase. For a distributed work on a project and as a source control system, we use the TIA portal project server, also known as a multi-user server. For order management, we use the open source software Jenkins. Jenkins is a server that allows developers to build, test and deliver software automatically. In Jenkins, a new job is created for each TIA portal project on the project server. For each new revision on the project server, the job is executed again. Here we talk about builds. Each build is tested and the result is evaluated. It is also possible to add other actions, such as a notification to the developer in the event of an error. This process makes it possible for changes to PLC blocks to be detected fully automatically after they have been stored on the project server, checked with stored test cases and then inform the library developers about the test results. Let's look at this process in practice. In our example, we have five different environments. On the one hand, an engineering system with TIA Portal version 16 and an engineering system with TIA Portal version 17. The next instance is the source control server, in which the TIA Portal project server is installed as a versioning system, as well as the project server listen console application, which checks the project server for new projects and revisions at short intervals and, if necessary, forwards this to the orchestration software Jenkins, which coordinates the automatic processes on the server. When we visit the Jenkins website, we see the project in our continuous integration process, with the first column showing the status of the last build, the second column a short report, and the third the name of the project. So we can see that the top project was successfully built and all tests were successful. On the second project, the build failed to complete successfully and the previous builds also failed. The third project was marked as unstable because some of the tests failed. The fourth project is our template project, which is cloned and adapted for each new project added to the project server. So, it was never built itself. The last project was also marked as unstable. In addition, more than half of the tests failed which is also reflected in the icon of the short report. On the dashboard, we can also see that we have two build nodes, one for TIA Portal version 16 projects and one for TIA Portal version 17 projects. If necessary, additional build nodes could also be added to test several projects in parallel. If we select the project, Library of General Functions version 16, we see the overview of the last builds, including Error Overview. The project server is stored in the configuration, as well as the name of the project and the TIA portal version with which it was created. The build settings define what Jenkins should do during a build. We find references to two batch files, project export to export the project from the project server to the respective test engine and project check to run the tests. These are called during build on the respective test machine. In each of the test machines, different applications are used for testing, which was implemented by means of individual batch files. After the test execution, Jenkins reads the test log and stores it in the Jenkins build. If we switch to the test engine for version 16, we see that the connection to the Jenkins server is handled via a corresponding application provided by Jenkins. We see the two batch files that the Project Server Export Console calls to export the projects as well as the Project Check application, both of which are available as application examples. In the test engine for version 17 projects, in addition to the Jenkins application, 
we see the project server export console again. And secondly, the application test runner, which automatically starts the execution of the style guide and application tests for the test suite. Let's now switch to the engineering system version 16, where the project is already stored on the project server. In Jenkins, we look at the complaint errors that are displayed in the graph and can be found in the latest test results. For example, wrong naming of variables and unnecessary activation of external writability and visibility of variables. We now switch to TIA portal and adjust the criticized variables. To do this, we open the interface of the block and first adjust the names so that they satisfy the camel case rule. Next, we deactivate the setting writable from HMI, OPC UA or Web API for the input variables. After fixing the errors, we release the block type as a new version in the library and check in the project as a new revision on the project server. A comment is also entered here, so that the colleagues know which changes have been made to the project. The already shown listener now registers that a new revision has been uploaded to the project server, which automatically creates a new build in Jenkins. This is done in the background and is displayed in Jenkins after a short time. We can track the status via the console. And see in the version 16 test machine that a TIA portal instance has been started in the background on the automation client. After a short time, the tests are finished and the test result can be retrieved in Jenkins. As you can see in the diagram, the corresponding errors have been fixed. This can also be seen in the latest test results. Let's now switch to TIA Portal version 17, where we first import the style guide rules provided by the corresponding application example. Then we look at the two prepared test cases of the application test for our module LGF integrator. The first test passes the value 0 to both input variables and expects an error. In the second test, the variable ramp is connected with a positive value so that the error should disappear. We are now adding the project to our project server. Again, a comment is added for traceability. When switching to Jenkins, we see that the project was created in the background after a short time and the tests are executed on the version 17 test machine. A look at the console as well as the test machine shows the execution, whereby we can watch the execution of the tests. The test results are displayed here after the tests have been completed, both for the style guide tests and for the application tests, where we can detect an incorrect execution because the error output of our module does not return the expected value. We switch to the engineering system version 17 and adjust both the variables criticized by style guide rules and the output criticized by the application test.
The changes are then updated with a comment in the library and added to the project server. After checking in the newer revision on the project server again, we see in Jenkins how this revision is tested. In the end, we can see that the fix of the errors was successful. It can also be configured in Jenkins that the information about the test success is automatically passed on to the developers in order to be able to identify any errors in the program code at an early stage. Now you know the components of a continuous integration process in the TIA portal environment. This supports you in keeping your software quality at a consistently high level through individual automatic processes and tests during your development process. Thank you for your attention.